ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to the Zombie Train. This is episode number 337, and I'm your host, Ellis, otherwise known as the Admiral. This week, we're taking a question from Dean on episode 275, and he asks, Where did the lubrication for your steam locomotives come from? Did you find it, or make it, or, well, make it or find it? And my answer to that is all over the place. Uh, we absolutely took as much as we could from... Okay, okay, so there are two two portions to this. Obviously, Zombie Train Incorporated stuff is different than regular Zombie Train stuff. The thing with ZT Inc. stuff is we needed a lot more of it, but we did have sort of infrastructure and manpower enough to make our own. It wasn't the best because it was made out of, like... What, what did we make it out of? I mean, there were some petroleum-based products in there when we could do that, but for the most part... There was, like, some sort of plant-based lubricant that people had come up with that we ended up using for a lot of the Zombie Train Incorporated. Not that oil ever really goes bad, and we learn how to filter it and recycle it and and stuff like that, so that wasn't really an issue. It's not like gasoline. But during the zombie train, the regular zombie train, in the years that we ran it, there were a number of sources for lubricant that we had to uh, had to seek out. I mean, heritage sites being one, of course, but then like every automotive shop that we could find, because... We would use just oil or grease or, you know, try to make our own stuff out of existing lubricants. You know, on a, on a steam engine you need, I mean, you need a lot of everything. You need regular oil, you need grease, like, uh, like hard grease. And that was difficult to come by sometimes. Sometimes we had to do, we had to make do with some substitutes. Uh, there was a settlement that they actually manufactured lard, uh, or they had a, they had a, a factory of sorts, or a mill, I guess, where that was one of the things they could produce. Not that anybody really had use for lard very much, but we found that we could actually use it as a, as a solid lubricant. Uh, of course, it wasn't the best, but we used it, uh, but yeah, that was one of the things where, unlike fuel, where we could just go out and, and chop some trees down if we were in the right kind of place, lubricant was pretty difficult to come by, and whenever we found some, we would do our best to stock up. I was, I was actually kind of, uh, I was always nervous that we were going to run out. It was always something in the back of my mind, you know. We we thought about fuel and we thought about water and we planned around that a lot. It's, you know, we can get approximately this many miles of hard running out of the tender and whatever extra stores we have with us. It's like lubricant, man. If we are in the middle of nowhere, there's no way we're going to be able to get more. And that's why we had to to learn some some techniques for for reusing oil and and things like that or uh for making like I said some sort of there were some leaf or plant-based substitutes that we came up with on the go they usually didn't work very well but they were better than nothing uh we would have to run it kind of slow until we got to a town and then we would like Okay, so it was like this. We go to the stores, you know, the automotive stores and automotive shops. Uh, you know, getting stuff off the shelves was good, was the best we could do, really, if there wasn't a locomotive shop in town. And from there... Uh, what, what were the next steps? Okay, so there was a point where we would start getting, you know, draining oil out of cars, 
to use if we didn't find enough. Uh, but yeah, so it was in this order. It was stores and automotive shops that had stuff on hand. And then it was recycled oil in automotive shops, etc. And then it was like draining oil and transmission fluid out of cars to use, which we did have to do sometimes. Uh, there were there was more than one instance that I can remember where we thought things were going badly and we were just close to a highway and nothing else, so we stopped and we went onto the highway and, you know, basically emptied every car in sight and lugged that stuff back to the train to use. And some of it we did manage to turn into a rudimentary form of of hard grease. And by hard grease, I just mean not fluid. So, yeah, we we did manage to get by. Uh, the cars were another story, because obviously the engine was the most important thing, but when we started to run low, we would have to neglect the uh, plane bearings on some of the cars, and that led to hot boxes from time to time. We never had anything catastrophic happen, but we did have times where we had to stop the train and sort out a hot box. And then the Zombie Train Incorporated started, and the Navy had a reserve of lubricant and grease for their ships, as well as we didn't really like tooling around in military bases for obvious reasons, but it meant that because we had them on our side, we could get into army bases more easily and take all the grease and oil there that they used for the, you know, for army vehicles like tanks. And, yeah, and that, and that gave us a big leg up. So once we were parting with them, then we had a, a decent supply that was, you know, relatively consistent, and also we had somebody to back us up if things went really wrong. And we had the Enterprise, which would come and bail a train or two out if they ran out of anything, really. We had uh, instances of the dirigible having to deliver coal to a, uh, to a train that was stranded. It couldn't carry too much because it is a dirigible. It's a lighter than aircraft. They don't have the greatest carrying capacity. But it was certainly better than nothing especially if they were really, really out there. And they could lower it. Uh, when we did that kind of thing, we would often... We would often get the planes out of the hangar and then hoist up a... basically a big container or a hopper of coal into the hangar and then go over the... Uh, the train in question, and literally lower the hopper down to them and let them open it and pour into the tender. Not easy to do. You would need to do it when the wind was very still, or you would need to tie the thing down something fierce, but it was still easier most of the time than sitting there and shoveling and shoveling and shoveling. So, it helped. Uh... Aside from being a massive PR tool, the Enterprise was useful a time or two for these weird, hey, we're in trouble, can you bail us out situations. Most of these weren't my train, though. Uh, before we instituted proper, you know, before we instituted serious training regiments and, like, lots and lots and lots of rules on what to do and what not to do, things that we had learned over the course of the zombie train that we, you know, didn't realize necessarily that we really needed to apply and to tell everyone about. Uh, there were a good number of mishaps that needed outside assistance. And then, as the zombie train incorporated grew, and we were able to pull engineers and basically give them give them courses, and I was able to actually write courses, etc. Then people got better about, oh, you know, I have this amount of water, I know I can go this far, and I have this amount of coal, I know I can go this far, and these are the locations that I'm likely to get more supplies, and 
you know, that sort of thing. We got people to be outspoken when they felt like they didn't have enough fuel or water or even motive power to get where they wanted to go. And that was a huge boost. And that pretty much solved, and not all of them, but most of the related issues of of trains running out of something on the go. Also, my computer is, like, freaking out. Oh, well. Uh, so, with that in mind, yeah, we, we ended up having a fairly robust supply line for coal and for lubricant, which was, you know, like I said, it was the deceptively tricky thing, because you don't necessarily think about it, and when we left Steamtown... I didn't really think about it that much, and then we got to a point where it was like, oh yeah, we're going to need more of that, huh? We really are going to need more of that. What are we going to do? And so, you know, just started experimenting with, well, what can we use to make some sort of lubricant? What's slippery, you know? What's slippery and kind of hard? And funnily enough, lard was one of the first things that came to mind, and, you know, we ended up using that in a decent capacity for a stretch of time, so that worked. Not great, but it worked. And, yeah, recycling oil, recycling grease from, from other vehicles, because obviously when we're on the road, it's not like we have a, a pan collecting oil, uh, all of it. That's the thing, steam engines, uh, they just sort of leave it all behind. It just drips off. Uh, it doesn't get collected again, unlike your car. So, yeah, we did go through a lot of it. More than I, more than I had anticipated, and it was a lot more of a pain than I had expected. But, with the solutions that we eventually came up with, with the people that were able to help us, and with a lot of really hardcore scavenging mostly the scavenging, uh, we were able to get by. So. And it was that, when we moved on to the, the Zombie Train Incorporated, it was really tough to sort of break out of that habit. We weren't supposed to be doing that much scavenging anymore. We were supposed to have our own supply lines for things and, and be working with people for things, and that was, that was really one of the key points of the Zombie Train Incorporated, because instead of tooling through... Uh, and looting all these abandoned or mostly abandoned settlements, you know, towns and cities that were emptied of, that were devoid of human life. Instead, it was our prerogative to go out and find people that could maybe make stuff for us and trade with them and bring them things that, that they couldn't make on their own. Sometimes that was like food and fresh water, but other times it was like, I don't know, packaged goods, you know, wooden crates, uh, furniture, houses, not whole houses, obviously, but, but you know, lumber. Uh, you know, and later things like gasoline. Uh, what are some of the other things that we like to move? I mean, fruit was an important one, because not everyone can grow fruit, and you need it to help prevent scurvy which was a really unfortunate thing to have to deal with on land. Definitely felt weird. Uh, it's like, oh, that's a problem? Oh yeah, it is a problem. We definitely need, you know, we need that sort of thing. I mean, pharmaceuticals were another thing. You, I, you know, I mentioned scurvy. It's a, it's a vitamin deficiency that causes it. So a good multivitamin will substitute you, but now we needed to find those, and we had to raid pharmacies and, you know, whatever. And so... Some part of it was scavenging for certain things, and another part of it was just finding people who had had already done that, or just had an abundance, uh, you know, warehouses and and manufacturing plants and uh, and dockyards that had the stuff that people wanted. So, yeah, and then other people that were growing things that people wanted or making things, uh, you know, tools. Tools were in were kind of difficult to get. Uh, Despite the fact that they were all over the place, getting a good set was not easy. 
Anyway, it kind of got a little far from the original question, but I did. I hope that it was a decent answer. And I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I will see you next week. This is the Admiral, signing off.